The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt, big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six-rotor airships. Airlifting. I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? We all are. This belt worries me. A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. So am I. He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears, some sort of camera. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glassy-eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. The corpse is dead silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Who is he? He is male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. 
The corpse looks right through you as you distance yourself from its stench. Eyes like a shark. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs and his neck just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. I see it. His neck too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So, what do you think? Agreed. Especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports her hanging. You would still like the hypostasis marks in the neck to be a bit more pronounced. Maybe it looks faint to you? It could be more pronounced, actually. Du moins noté. There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck are you saying? <sighs> Talking about shit. Did we? I don't feel lucky. I agree. His personality is no longer a part of the world. Totally dead. That sounds about right, yes. I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little sport. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means he fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal like. But there is no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Mm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. Someone else? You mean like... The police? What was that about processing, then? Weren't they supposed to take care of the boots? Why don't they help? No. Think of the boys from processing as murderers. Only instead of people, they murder crime scenes. Processing is a wrecking crew. They know how to commission off items and how to work the incinerator in the morgue. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. Climb up there and... saw the branch? There has to be a less risky way. With less falling down of trees. Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off! How? With the buckle ties the rope to the branch, 
That's a good spot to aim. Where? Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain a Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. I'll blow his head off. Take it! Take the shot! Yeah, take the shot. Kuno wants some of that shit. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. That's a Kiel A9090 armistice. Mass-produced muzzle loader, ascetic, frugal, one of the most common firearms in the world. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. He's gonna fucking me! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. A lot of things were wrong with that shot. The Phalostes was the wrong choice. His shoulders were raised, but above all, he cannot trust his eyesight. Fucking idiot! Mukaba asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? Kuno's sorry too. Kuno feels sorry for the Pino clad. The lieutenant doesn't say a word, just looks at the gun in his hand. Kuno study too. The lieutenant doesn't say a word, just... No, we are lucky as it is. We didn't break anything, and the victim remains uncompromised. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. You know, you don't feel like too bad of a shot yourself. It's bad as it is, us shooting firearms like punks. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. <laughs> they only have one gun! This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Banani Boyka, take it and shoot yourself in the mouth. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. You've held this, an A9 armistice, before. At some point, it probably used to be your choice of firearm. It still feels comfortable, like you never laid it down. Kuno, tell him to shoot himself in the mouth. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? At least you won't miss. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the noon light as the corpse slowly rotates. The slow movement of the branch in the wind and your shoulders directing the gun sink up, dancing hypnotically. Look, he's crying. You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? The buckle explodes into tiny pieces, coming loose with a whirr. With your hand numb from the recoil, you look at the body slump down. For a moment, the man appears to kneel in front of you, looking straight at you, helpless, trapped within itself. Communism. It takes a millisecond for the association to flash within your cortex. You have no idea where it's coming from, only that it's right. Then the rigor in his muscles gives up and 
he smashes sideways into the spring mud, letting out a horrid stench. By being a damn good shot, ace is high. The ace is high, a custom invented by the aerostatic brigades during the revolution, is used to celebrate success in Revachon, especially in sports. The gesture is spread across the world, despite the defeat of the revolutionaries themselves. You could add an ace's low to it, if you like, by turning your back after the high and waiting for another. The high arrives with a sharp slap. As you turn around, there is a moment of doubt. Feels like that low ain't gonna connect. Chill, it's gonna connect. But then it does, and with furious precision. The lieutenant is not one to leave an ace's low hanging. I knew these guys were f Kuno cracks with laughter. Sounds like someone strangling a seagull. It's clear he enjoys himself. I knew they suck each other off! We will perform a field autopsy and determine the cause of death. But before... Excuse me. Slumped on the ground like that has not improved the way the corpse smells. The fall seems to have released something deep inside it. It looks like I feel like taking a break from the stench. I'm sorry to interrupt the jubilations here, just a little breather before we do the autopsy. Yes, the four phases of a murder scene. One, investigation of the scene. I'm satisfied with that part. The trash container, the prints, we've been thorough enough. Two, initial examination of the victim. We were exhaustive in our efforts there. Good job. Three, field autopsy. This will not be pleasant or easy, and it will have to be performed on the scene. The fuck are they on about? Cops are gonna cut his shit up next! Four and final, transport of the coroner's case to the district morgue. I'll do that. God, this stinks. No, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain. From crime scene to autopsy to clean up, we do it all. Your station would not have assigned you the case otherwise. This case is important. In the meantime, we should try to interview Evrard Claire, the leader of the Union. Harbour property was clearly used in the hanging. The harbour just east of here. Getting in might prove a challenge, though. Or we could ask around for the representative of the logistics company. My initial information says the Wild Pines have sent some sort of strike negotiator to wrangle control back from Evrard. You could ask the gardener for directions. Yes. And those were the interviewees. Let's go.